Bacteria are all around us, even in our food. It's important we properly cook and prepare our food so that we don't get sick. According to the Centers for Disease Control, or CDC, foodborne illness occurs when someone eats food that is contaminated by dangerous bacteria. One in six Americans, or 48 million people, get sick from foodborne illness every year. The two types of bacteria that we will focus on are E. coli and Salmonella. E. coli are bacteria that are found in some foods and in the intestines of humans and animals. Some E. coli bacteria are harmless, but others can make you very sick. According to the CDC, the harmful strains can cause urinary tract infections, respiratory illnesses, and abdominal discomfort. Symptoms can last anywhere between 5 and 7 days. Salmonella is a type of bacteria that comes from undercooked meat, poultry, and eggs. Symptoms include vomiting, diarrhea, and fever, and can last anywhere between 4 and 7 days. At Meadows Laboratories in Omaha, Nebraska, the Microfood Laboratory tests for many kinds of E. coli and salmonella on a daily basis. Microfood Lab Manager Ken Johnson gave me a tour and explained to me how food safety tests work. Meadows Laboratories has specific procedures that staff must follow when testing for E. coli and salmonella. These procedures were approved by the Association of Official Analytical Chemists, or ALAC, which means the standards for the tests ran at Midwest Laboratories meet the standards of different laboratories across the world. Each test has to have a control sample of the bacteria to make sure the conditions are right for the control bacteria to grow. Each sample is weighed before adding enrichment broth to it to encourage the bacteria to grow. From here, the samples are incubated and then tested for bacteria. The E. coli and salmonella tests are very similar. The differences in the procedures are the enrichment broth types, temperature, and length of incubation. As scientists study bacteria in the food we eat, there are steps we can take at home to prevent foodborne illness. For example, here's how to properly cook chicken to eliminate salmonella. Extension educator and food safety and nutrition expert Alice Henneman allowed us to use her kitchen for this demonstration. To avoid cross-contamination when preparing chicken, make sure to use one cutting board or surface for the chicken. The chicken should not share a cutting board with your veggies or other foods. After the cutting board is used, wash it separately from other dishes with soap, hot water, and a disinfectant. You must use different utensils for the different phases of chicken cooking. For example, you cannot use the same knife that was used to cut the raw chicken to cut the chicken when it is fully cooked. To ensure that the chicken is fully cooked, use a meat thermometer. For a fully cooked chicken, the thermometer should read 165 degrees Fahrenheit. To find the correct temperature, use the following step. Push the thermometer into the thickest part of the chicken and make sure that the thermometer does not touch the bone. It doesn't matter how you prepare the chicken, 165 degrees will be the fully cooked temperature. Pink isn't the issue, it's the internal temperature. When you are finished cooking, do not forget to refrigerate your leftovers to keep bacteria from growing on the exposed food as it cools down. While scientists study to keep our food supply safe, you can also prevent foodborne illness by practicing important food safety techniques. For more information about foodborne illness, food safety, and nutrition, visit Nebraska Extension's website at food.unl.edu.